YouTube. Welcome to RV Daydream, and it's beautiful outside. I can't believe this is Ohio. It's October 6th. Hmm. What's going on? What have you been up to? I've been riding on a daydream. Actually, this happened last year, too. Look at these guys. Shorts and t-shirts, as am I. Uh, we had a bunch of rain that came through last night, but uh, we have about five days here in the 80s that's uh, t starting today. Um, we're going to be the high of 80 today, and we're going to have a couple of mid 80-degree uh, days, and then I don't care. All of them are, <laughs> all of them are great. Anything that's above uh, 70 degrees. I mean, shorts and t-shirt with a breeze, and I feel very comfortable. I'm walking to the truck because I've been working on the truck, and I want to talk to you guys about problems you may run into or you should re run into at some point. Heidi went and got her tags for the uh, RV and her car. I got to put the sticker on that today. But underneath the hood here, if you guys seen on uh, Facebook, uh, I made a modification to the truck, yet another one. And in this case, I added a uh, twin 61 millimeter throttle body uh, to increase the airflow. And uh, in turn, hopefully give me more performance. Of course, I've got more fuel being delivered um, in a roundabout way. I have my fuel pressure bumped up. But with the uh, Banks torque tubes headers that I have on here and uh, the, the higher flow cooler thermostat and uh, oil cooler and aftermarket ignition system that I have over here, uh, all that stuff adds to the performance. But I want you guys that have RV you know, motorhomes or you have tow vehicles to realize that there's more to just bolting on parts to get performance. Now a lot of this seems like common sense to me however it wasn't always common sense uh, but I kind of figured it out on my own and there's a lot of people that never figure this out and that is you just don't buy components and bolt them on your vehicle and number one expect immediate improvements uh, without other modifications and number two um, things don't always go as planned matter of fact they almost never go as planned so something as simple as an air filter and changing your air filter to a high flow air filter like the K&N that I have on my truck um, that's not a big deal you need to be able to change an air filter there's going to be some performance gains potentially but nothing crazy it's just going to help overall something like exhaust headers or an exhaust system like I bolted onto the truck if you want to tackle that yourself great go right into it and this is going again for motorhomes too but expect a lot of things to go wrong you're not going to necessarily just unbolt everything get the new stuff and bolt it on in place there's a lot of little things that are always required and even if everything goes exactly the way you expect because you have moved around a lot of other stuff that's in the vicinity of whatever you're changing you may have an issue that pops up and that's where I've talked about in the past on uh, like in my son's case with his van you guys have been watching that van build series uh, if you have a problem that just pops up and you just made a modification to your vehicle or a change or a repair to your vehicle it is most likely directly related to whatever you just did whatever that repair is or that modification so why am I telling you this well I'm sitting here with my truck and it's been down for three days uh, whenever I got the part that I needed initially to bolt on uh, I took off the throttle body the old throttle body and I started to bolt up the new one come to find out that the factory installed the linkage incorrectly on the new throttle body that I bought. So I had to get another throttle body, not a big deal, and uh, had that overnighted, got it delivered, I bolted it on, and went to start the truck, and the truck would not start. It wouldn't start at all. Now, I haven't had a problem with it not starting, except way back whenever we were coming back from our Florida trip, and we stopped in West Virginia at the Tamarack. If you guys don't remember that, I'll put a little clip in here. We had our first snafu. Uh, we went to start the truck this morning and it just cranked and cranked. Um, 
and you could tell it wasn't a fuel problem. Uh, you hear the fuel pump running and, and all that happy stuff. But um, it just wanted to kick over. It sounded like it was ignition. So I came out here and uh, bypassed this uh, Mallory ignition box that I installed to help with fuel and power and everything else. Um, and it, it's failed. Um, when you go to crank it, there's just two lights that flash and then that's it. Um, what happens is those lights should continuously run as the engine runs. But um, So I had to bypass the uh, 6A box um, and put just the factory ignition back on there. So let's see if it starts. About these older Fords uh, you can just unplug and plug in your old ignition and run off of it uh, the factory ignition does a pretty good job but I wanted a little bit better that's why I went to that aftermarket ignition now in this case it wouldn't start and it's because of something that's just totally random but I didn't have to troubleshoot very long because I kept my mind straight on that mantra of it's got to be related to something you just did. Now granted, I looked at all the wiring and all the hoses and everything that was all around the truck in case I was leaning on something or I pushed on something and could have broke it. However, in this case, it's the throttle position sensor. For whatever reason, the throttle position sensor, which looks to be original, so that's 180,000 miles, whenever I had taken it off and put it back on the new throttle body, I think something inside must have tweaked because I'm not getting any kind of a reference coming out of the throttle body, a signal return. Um, I have a book that I've used as my Bible for years, I think I bought it back in 92, that's all about the fuel injection systems on these EEK systems, which that's just a Ford term, that's just a, a term people use. It's an EEC, and in this case it's a Ford, EEC4, they just call it an EEK. And that's prior to OBD2. Uh, so as far as being able to self-diagnose the truck, you know, being able to self-diagnose itself, it doesn't do as good a job as the OBD2s. But you can still make modifications on these and changes, and, and they respond pretty good. So I just wanted to tell you guys, if you're thinking about modifying your RV or your truck, and even if you have an OBD2 system, don't expect everything to go smoothly. Expect things to react differently whenever you make a change from what was engineered from the factory. So even if you get just a five-star tuner and you plug it into your truck or your motorhome and you change the settings, there's going to be some different feels to the RV. The shifting might be a little bit different. Um, it might uh, get a little, bit, a little bit less gas mileage because now you've got more power. I mean, you got to get that more power from somewhere. Uh, however, if you put the new tuner on and you don't try to run it too hard, uh, you should see better improvements. And again, that's for OBD2 stuff. But as far as hard modifications or big modifications like I've done on this, um, everything can add. I mean, it does add and it is worth it. But just be aware that not everything is going to go smooth. Just like RVing, you're not just going to hook up and drive to wherever you want with no problems every single time it just doesn't work that way so that's it i'm going to get back to work i get to put the decal on the rv and i get to wait for the uh, throttle position sensor heidi's going to be dropping it off at the house here and uh, i'm going to get this truck to run so i can actually go drive it i appreciate it guys as always we hope to see you out there bye here we go